So we've been hearing a lot recently about people who might need to be humbled, people whose egos are getting the best of them, um, people having a big ego, and there's so much to unpack there, and that's what I wanted to get into today. Before we get started, my name is Roshni. This channel is called Beitu Grew Up and it's dedicated to talking about self-care, self-work, and self-worth. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the idea that you need to understand what the ego is and everything that it stands for. And, and an important part of understanding that is kind of looking at the full picture. I wanted to start with a little bit of background on these terms. So you may have heard of the superego, the ego, and the id with Freud, or the self and the ego with Jung. What I'm referring to is Heinz Kohut's idea of self-psychology. So Kohut was an Austrian psychoanalyst. He essentially came up with the idea of self-psychology and studying the idea of the self as kind of this human experience. And so certain forms of upbringing and being raised can encourage you to look at your full self and embrace your full self and other methods of child rearing don't necessarily encourage that or certain environments don't encourage that so if a child is able to perform in self activities which are things that help bring out that higher self or or has good relationships with self objects those are all things that end up developing a healthy self esteem with that in mind we can either grow and have a healthy self esteem or because we didn't get a lot of these things developmentally, we don't necessarily have that healthy of an idea of who we are. He dissects the idea of the self versus the ego, and I'm going to explain that now. So what you need to know about your ego is that it does help you survive in society. It is really important in a lot of ways in order to keep you progressing, keep you moving towards your goals. But at the same time, it can get really carried away. It can kind of make your entire importance as a human being based on what other people think of you. It's looking for other people to validate it all the time. It's there to protect you, but it's also there to kind of make you seem a little bit better, make you seem like you have an edge up. You know, it's all about protecting that really vulnerable part of you. And it's interesting because all of that kind of does revolve around self-worth. And that's why I feel like it's so, so important to talk about self-worth because everything that we're doing in some way or another is either to get that idea of self-worth, to maintain that idea of self-worth, to convince ourselves that we have worth. And when it comes to the self, the self is a lot more patient. It's a lot more core to who you are. But there's parts of your personality that have just been there forever. It's just who you really are at your core. And money isn't gonna change that. Friends aren't gonna change that. Where you live isn't gonna change that. And you know, it's also the part of yourself that's really patient, that wants to take its time with things, that wants to do things the right way in the right time. And there's some really great parts of all of us deep down. It's just about how much you give it light and how much you give it attention, and how much you feed those hobbies and those sides of yourself. It's what helps you stay connected to other people. There's someone that we absolutely love that's across the world and yet, you know, despite the amount of distance between you, you know exactly what they're going through. You know if they're having a bad day. That kind of connectivity, whether it's to another person, whether it's to a higher being, whether it's to someone that may have passed on, we kind of feel that connection to something bigger. And it doesn't mean that you have to be religious or spiritual. You just feel, you know, connected to other humans, to other life, to animals maybe. There's that part of you that really feels a lot Alive and awake and just connected and like you're thriving and that's where yourself is that's where yourself comes from so I hope that this kind of clarified it if you have any questions let me know in the comments below but the good news is that even though you've planted your roots in that one side of you that maybe isn't the greatest it's still possible to get in touch with that other part of you because it's been there all along. You know, like you can say so many things about yourself and I've said a lot of those things about myself too. And, oh, I'm just not meant to be sober. I'm not meant to be around long-term relationships. Or I'm not meant to be around healthy people who are not nocturnal. I used to be, you know, just constantly going from one party to the next, hopping between lots of different friends, lots of different environments. Like I was, I had my entire identity and my entire personality ingrained in that. So I get how scary it can feel to leave that and kind of jump away from that and move on to something new, but it's possible. And at the end of the day, your life won't really even look that different because it's still going to be you. You're just going to be a healthier version of yourself. So the good news is that, you know, if you do want to get in touch with that more patient part of yourself, that more 
that stronger part of yourself, that stable part of yourself, you, you still can. You always can make that choice and you can always start feeding that side of yourself. And one of the best ways that I've actually done this is the rule of do's and don'ts. So creating rules for yourself. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of B-roll here of this sheet where I actually did this and I got that idea. Um, I got this sheet from like a Tony Robbins documentary. He didn't explain it, but I saw people working on it. So I was like, ooh, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna kind of make it my own and make a little sheet for myself. And so I did that, it's on my fridge. I see it every single day. Um, and a lot of these rules have really made a fundamental difference in my life. Like for example, um, you know, saying the idea that my growth is painful, like that's something that I'm putting on the do not think list because that's not what I want to feel, but I know that I felt that way so much. I felt like being a good person is hard. Being a, a better person is painful you know it's hard to grow up it's hard to face the crap that you've done in your life but you've got to do that this is your renaissance you know this is your time to shift things around and change things and be a better person and if you don't take that time right now if you don't step up for yourself and give yourself that permission it's never gonna happen and more time is gonna go by and you're gonna feel more and more sorry for yourself and your life is gonna become like this entire pity party where you're self-sabotaging your talking yourself down from the things you really want to do you're ignoring your better judgment and you're just kind of living in this like mental squalor that's not healthy for anyone so you have to be able to give yourself that permission give yourself that chance face the fact face your past and just say this is what it is this is what my life has come to and this is what it's become right now but you know what i'm still alive i'm still breathing i'm still here to face it this is what Again, talking about that connectivity, this is what has been given to me as my life's work. You know, these, these are the challenges of my particular life. This is what I'm gonna, you know, face and this is what I've been dealt with. This is how I'm gonna be the absolute best I can be and use that, you know, to my advantage to grow from and learn from and create this beautiful life from because I've, you know, I have these challenges, but I know deep down that I am a stronger person. I know that I'm a person that can be patient because I'm doing the right thing. You know, you, if you're doing the right thing, then you don't have to rush. You can always find ways to be smarter and to grow and things like that, especially when it comes to social media or your business or whatever. But that doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice all of your morals. It doesn't mean that you have to give every last bit of your truth or every last bit of yourself up. You know, a lot of these things, it's possible to do it, but you just have to choose to do that with integrity. And that's where these rules come into play. You have to decide what your personal rules are. You have to decide what your personal struggles are, whether your rules have to do with being sober, whether it has to do with not contacting certain people or staying in contact with other people. So making that piece of paper didn't change my life. It wasn't like, oh my God, I woke up in a totally new life that next day. No, but I realized what some of my problems were. I sat down and I said, no, this is my bullshit this is my crap that I need to cut. That genuine acceptance, when you can accept the good and the bad parts of yourself, that is the most whole you will ever feel because we will always have bad parts of ourselves. We always will have edges that we need to soften and traumas that we need to heal. But facing that is the hardest freaking part. Being able to look at yourself and say, this is me being my own mother. This is me being my own parent and saying, you need to stop. You need to love yourself enough to not do that, to not talk to that person person to stay away from those things. So in your day-to-day -day life, look at, you know, does that mean not talking to a certain person? Does that mean blocking them on all social media? Does that mean reaching out to someone that you love and genuinely apologize? Break your rules down into some next steps of the next few weeks. And, you know, if it's a bunch of things you have to do, grab your calendar, your Google calendar, and write it down, plan it out. Say on, you know, this Monday, I'm gonna call this person. The next day, I'm gonna do this. What you're doing here is huge and it needs a lot of time and it needs a lot of intention and effort and just reasoning behind it all, you know what I mean? So I don't expect you to take this lightly. I don't expect this to happen in a day or in a week. You know, it's gonna take a long time, but it's all this process of just getting the ball rolling that's the hardest part. So after you've set those rules, you can set out your tasks and you can schedule them out for the next month. And the last thing is using affirmations. I talk about affirmations so much and honestly, they are so helpful. So taking affirmations and saying, you know, say one of your rules is, 
I'll use one of mine for example. So I give myself permission to stand out. So standing out was terrifying to me. I always wanted to blend in. I never did and all these different things that I've been doing with my business and with my YouTube channel have forced me to really put myself out there and to really make myself stand out. And I've been having to look at standing out as this unique, amazing thing instead of this bad, dangerous thing. So one of the ways, you know, that I can turn that into an affirmation is saying, you know, I give myself permission to show up. I show up. I am present in my day-to-day -day life. So just to wrap up, your ego does have some really solid parts of it. There are some good sides to your ego, like keeping you moving forward but at the same time we all have that deeper part of ourselves that wants to be seen that wants to be loved that wants to love others and that wants to do things for others but we can spend so much time living in our ego that that side gets overlooked and honestly it's about whichever side you feed is the one that comes out i hope that you enjoyed this one so much if you did drop a like and a subscribe down below i wish you all the best and Happy healing.